Monsieur Forget, Alain Forget, and I can call you Alain. Thank you for coming today because it's a very important day for me to have you here to discuss your philosophy. Now, I have been working with your philosophy, and in fact, it's uh, given mainly in the book which I have written, but you've also written a book which I'd very much like to recommend. It's called How to Get Out of This World Alive, and it's the philosophy of the four Ds. What are the four Ds? Well, the first D is distancing. If you want to have a chance to understand yourself, to progress in that knowledge of yourself, you have to create a non-judgmental observer. Uh, it's what Advaita Vedanta called the position of the witness, it's what the Buddha called the installation of attention, it's what Gurdjieff called the callback of the self, it's an ability to step back and observe without judging, without jumping to conclusion. In order to do that, you have to give to your structure, to your psychological structure, another identification, and the tool I use mainly, you can use a breathing, you can use the weight of your body, but if you unified vision, sound, the weight of the body, you step back, you namely produce an identification keeping those three sensory fields into one, therefore you step back further from your thinking process. And when thoughts appear, you can look at them without being taken by them. That is distancing. And what you suggest in your book is that you should be distancing all the time, every moment of the day. You don't fall into your thoughts, you stand by and watch them. Is that correct? As much as you can. As much as you can. And the idea is to think, see it as a fun sport. Because the first thing you gain from that it will give you more chance not to reproduce the same mistakes. Yes. So that's the first D, distancing. And the second D? Discernment is to drill into your layers. Drill into your, la your repressed layers. Timidity, fear of rejection, low self-worth, repressed guilt. We are constructed layers after layers. Like when you have a layers of anger, but usually below you have a layers of fear. So your philosophy, in fact, suggests that we're constructed in layers like that. Is like that a correct? fortress, walls after walls. And the idea is to drill into those walls, to bring them down and drill to another wall and another wall. It's called discernment. Distancing allows you to observe, discernment allows you to drill. And when I first uh, came across your system, I looked into myself, I saw no walls. How do you help people to see that they are constructed like this? Well, you can understand you have walls when you start to feel the resonance within the body. The intellect fires a question, but it's within the body you will feel the defense system. Who thinks that? Who feels that? To protect what? Discernment are a basic simple question. What part of me is in power in order to protect which part? And you, by asking the question, at one moment you will feel the resonance within the body. And when you are there, you know you hit the nail. Just to make it absolutely clear, we're built in layers. And some of the layers, the most profound ones, if you like, are constructed in childhood. Yes, absolutely. And these layers are there to form our personality and they will, in fact, be the main factors which drive our lives. Is that right? Absolutely. And am I right in saying that uh, one of the important points of your philosophy is that the basic layer is guilt and the basic layer is also fear. So it's fear and guilt right at the bottom. Absolutely, and that is why uh, uh, the Buddha see Maha an army of demons. That is why Jesus sees Satan. That is why in uh, numerous uh, mystical experience you have this darkness which will manifest itself as an ultimate lure 
to maintain the dynamic subject object, me and what is not me, which creates our world. And so if I take these fundamental layers, they have on them other layers. For example, uh, being a man, obviously I get a lot of layers from my mother. She may not have loved me or I may have felt that she didn't love me or she may have been overprotective. All these sort of feelings which are deep in me, uh, given to me by my parents, form a layer. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. And by drilling into this la those, those layers and asking yourself the right metaphysical question, uh, you can create a collapse, a collapse of the psychological structure, which is the, the aim of the system. And that you call the breakthrough, is that correct? Absolutely. Breakthrough, awakening, enlightenment. But I prefer breakthrough because it's more neutral. Now, to get down to that, you say that the central core of ourselves, this uh, nexus, if you like, of guilt uh, and fear, is surrounded by other layers which we use all the time. Uh, for example, social status is one. Tell us about social status and how that affects us. Well, social status. Uh, we know very well that we have more than 96% genes in common with a monkey. And when we observe baboon, chimps, or gorilla, it's all about politics to be as high as possible uh, in the group linked to social status. So we really function the same way. Um, it's a desire for sex and banana which runs our life, <laughs> usually. Yes, um, I've just come back from Africa, and if you look at the plains animals, they have sort of four drives, one to eat the grass, one to um, stop themselves being eaten. Uh, the next one is sex um, to reproduce, and the next one is to dominate. I mean, those seem to be the four basic drives, which you argue are very are common in us as well. Yes, we have sophisticated the thing to a point, but by sophisticating the thing to a point, we have overdeveloped our intellect and disconnect from our basic feeling. An animal, uh, when he's sick, uh, very naturally will get on a fast. And as you know, as a doctor, your patient will keep on eating. <laughs> yes, they do. So um, would, I, would, it, would I be right in saying that by using your method, people can help themselves with their n neurotic behaviors, uh, always breaking up their marriages, uh, always making sure that they don't work properly at work and finding excuses for not working properly. Uh, always wanting some people not to be advanced in work because they don't like responsibility. Does your system give an answer to the way that those feelings in people have occurred? You are defining as a third D, disidentification. Distancing, observing, discernment, drilling, disidentification, letting go, which is a result of the first two. Yes, and so when you start letting go, then you see more fundamental layers of yourself. Yes, of course, but mechanically, the prize you get is you don't reproduce the same thing. You're not on repeat anymore. You've got a real chance not to be on repeat. You fly at a higher altitude. Therefore, your life starts to be different because your choices are different. So it's a very important philosophy then. Because it's, a, it's a practical one, and the last D is discrimination, which is uh, the very center of metaphysical questioning, which to my understanding only works when you disturb the psychological layer deep enough. And what I mean by metaphysical questioning is uh, what is the subject, what is the object, what is inside, what is outside. Is there an observer? Is there an observed? Is the perceiver the perceived or is there a perceiver? When you push yourself with those questions, all of a sudden your ego collapses. And uh, what I call the breakthrough is a result of the collapse of the ego. And the collapse of the ego is created in this system by the combination of psychological drilling and metaphysical questioning. Now, there are a lot of quite difficult concepts there. Uh, what do you mean by what is inside, what is outside? What do you mean by 
can the perceiver perceive? So let's start by inside outside. Usually we consider then our thinking process, everything which goes within us is inside and which allows us to see the outside, uh, the color, uh, what we see around in that room. But we know very well that what we see around in that room is happening inside our brain. And inside our brain, there is no color, it's dark. So when you challenge yourself with those questions, you unbalance your own logic, you have a chance to destabilize yourself to a point. And if, on the other hand, you push the question, the psychological question, deep enough, linked to your parental issues, story with has, which has happened with your mother, how the conditioning of your mother is in your conditioning, and how makes that makes you repeat the same pattern again and again, then the metaphysical question can make you collapse. Uh, you brought the perceiver and the perceived. All we know is the perceived. You cannot know anything else but the perceived. So when you are taken by the question, can the, the, the perceived perceive? Uh, maybe not, because if the perceiver belongs to the perceived, there is no perceiver. If there is no perceiver, there is no perception. It's like that one day the system will collapse. Uh, what became very clear when you were giving that discussion is the fact that we look at the world through a series of filters the filters are the filters which we put on from childhood. And so is your system getting rid of these filters so that we see reality in, in a truer way? The more we clear the filter, the more we see the situation as it is. And the more we see the situation as it is, the more chance we have to press on a winning button instead of the repetitive losing button. So it's a nice practical philosophy. If you want to get on in your company, practice the four Ds, is that right? And that's very clear. That's very clear. It's probably why, as you know, the numbers of my students are CEOs. Yes. And if you want to keep your wife and not divorce her, again, possibly a little use of the four Ds might be helpful in, in your more intimate relationships. Yes, if you decide to really be a faithful husband and stop looking elsewhere. <laughs> Yes, now comes the killer question. Why are we doing this? What is the advantage of the breakthrough? You evolve. You go to the next level. I see the universe, I see our conditioning as a set of Russian dolls. Uh, when we move to the next level of our evolution, it's like you get out of Plato's cave. Uh, you go beyond time, you go beyond space, the ego dies, fear dies. The ego is just a conditioning of our fear. When we unlock that door, you know you are, you know you are never born, you know you cannot die, you are just light, consciousness, energy. You're not in the universe, the universe is in you. The game is over. If I was to say, is, is this not just imagination, what would you say? I will uh, ask you to go back to the book you wrote <laughs> and uh, speak about the light phenomena which you have uh, explored with my brain and the brain of my student and the conclusion you came to which gives us a glimpse, a scientific glimpse about the next level. And I think the interesting point is that that description you've just give us, given us, in fact, is a description that, that the mystics have given us across the ages. We're never born, we never die. I think, um, was it not the Buddha who at the time of his awakening looked at the northern star and said, I was born before you were here, um, the evening star. It's uh, a really very wide view of the ultimate nature of reality. Is that correct? Yes, I always saw the mystics as scouts of our possible evolution. But the idea uh, is to take uh, the message of the mystic um, without the 
a religious package, because religious are system of beliefs. And very often, the mystics takes us beyond system of belief. And sometimes, they give their light for that. Uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. Socrates, Margaret Porret, Halaj, uh, 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 developing their idea, put the system of beliefs at risk, the system of beliefs of those days. And very often, they got killed for that. So, your book, The Four Ds, How to Get Out of This World Alive, you get out of this world alive because, in fact, you have evolved beyond it, if you like. And my book, which is uh, an autobiography of my life and uh, my meeting with you and my practicing of your method, would you say that these were the two fundamental methods which at the moment have been written to encapsulate your method? Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, um, a couple of times you went close to the void. And remember how fear blocked the process for you? Yes. And it was those experiences that led me to believe, yes, this is a good method. And if I clear myself properly, I too should be able to avoid, avoid, uh, evolve. <laughs> so that I don't get trapped and get out of this world alive. Monsieur Forget, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to chat with you, Peter. Thanks, Alan.